can we start uh, ashma are we showing the uh, display okay yes mr mishra we are after this perfect good evening everybody this is sudhir mishra yet again in the sudhir mishra show today we have a very special guest a guest who is a first generation lawyer originally he was part of the indian civil service he was a distinguished indian revenue service officer and after many years in the services he decided to become a lawyer and that kind of journey is very different for our legal fraternity he leaves his job joins the journey as a lawyer establishes the law firm in delhi in the capital city and never ever thought that any comfort should be there the person actually always thought and always said that i still believe that the shortest distance between two point is still a straight line so uh, this journey before i bring him on stage i will say about him the kind of journey he has embarked upon he actually alama ikbal has said very correctly about his journey khud hi ko kar buland itna ki har takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata teri raja kya hai so i welcome we lakshmi kumaran the founder managing partner of lakshmi kumaran shridharan uh, before all of you sir most welcome good evening sir good evening to you sir what a distinguished life you are leading and uh, you will be very happy to know that uh, for many many years i have been thinking and i have shared a stage with you as a co panelist i always used to think i have seen you in flights how you travel how much care you take and uh, your straight forward practice uh, the kind of challenges you have faced for 22 years i am practicing so i had some amount of idea and i was knowing you will be very caught up but you gave us time we are very thankful to you and uh, i'll start the uh, interview with uh, 1974 when you joined indian revenue service take us to your early childhood sir and what was your motivation how you became a civil servant oh well, i was born in a village and i studied in my school in a place called thiruvallur in uh, in tamil nadu in a municipal school and i learned my english alphabet only at the 9th standard a 9th class at the time the course and uh, i was always a topper and i got scholarships otherwise it was difficult life uh, we can say we are uh, from a lower middle class family in tamil nadu but the scholarship helped me in uh, studies and uh, i completed my masters in mathematics mathematics is still my passion and i was teaching mathematics in madras university which i loved most and one day my professor asked me whether i would like to write the civil service examinations i asked him don't you like me he said no let on become an overage therefore you may be age bar or don't write i wrote I qualified, and then I joined the service in 1974. About 11 years I was in the government before I decided. Yes, and and sir, so it's a very fascinating thing that in last two years, a lot of youngsters have started knowing about uh, the senior parashar. The senior parashar were the attorney general of during that period, and I have been told that he had a very big influence. on uh, you actually leaving your job and thinking about legal career because he founded that you were absolutely suitable for legal profession and what influence he had in your life you used to go to his office and how he was a big influence on you well i think it's a more an accident uh, <clears throat> sudhir i did not know him earlier though he is from tamil nadu because i was not in the law profession uh Way back in '82, I was under secretary to the government of India, 
the then chairman asked me i must go and brief the the council arguing for the government on some major tax issues like bombay tiger international etc mr parasaran was the solicitor general that one with matan jindo so i had the privilege of briefing him and he asked me to be present in the court when the argument were going on i was uh, merely under under scrutiny and the hearing went on for about 21 days and it was a tough case and then i went on prodding persuading telling what were points i could think of and it was fascinating for me the the both arguments are going on both sides brilliant judges are hearing the matter etc and uh, after this matter one more matter one more matter and i went on briefing him and one day he looked at me and then he said uh, i think uh, you have a fairly good legal acumen why do you want to continue as a officer in the government why don't you practice law i told him i don't know anybody in the profession i don't know anybody as a client so i do not know is it god will help you and with a great man i listened to him i took 3 days to decide i quit today when i think of it <laughs> it's extremely difficult yeah. but i did it and and sir you will see my research that i have gone down to the detail uh, okay. and i want to ask you what was like the family decision did you speak to malti ma'am did you speak to your children had arrived in 1985 was badri around badri was there uh, but he was not in a position to say yes or no because too young <laughs> he is 3 4 years old then yeah my daughter sharanya was not born in fact she was born after i became a lawyer and uh, <clears throat> i did discuss with my wife my parents and my parents in law because the parents in law the arranged marriage they, they gave in marriage daughter to a bureaucrat and suddenly is jobless and then he is in the uh, street lawyer so i just asked them but they had the confidence in me let me i think uh, you can do well so take a decision so they supported me tremendously my parents my wife my brother shridhar he i joined along with me we joined the journey together yes yes so that that is why my second share for you because of your journey with your younger brother main akele hi chala tha jaane mein manzil magar log saath aate gaye aur karwa banta gaya majroo sultanpuri has said this that i started all alone then the community started developing and then it became a huge movement so that is the characteristic of this law firm today one of the most respected firm uh one of the early things uh, in 1985 what was the scene like of corporate law firm what was the corporate law structure in 1985 like without any technology or without any uh, economic revolution in the country so oh very interesting question uh the concept of big corporate law firms was not known but there were good law firms litigating law firms like jb tata chandan company there crawford bailey there or dignum these are the good law firms uh, were doing litigation work corporate work was at that time was not that much and speaking for ourselves uh, we were working on our halda typewriter and then uh, the correcting and making cyclostyle copies and all the things so that's how we uh, did our uh, uh, preparation of papers and all the things etc and there were no computers and then only memory of your uh, case laws take down your own notes and all the things etc so 1985 was very different from what we are seeing today very different and uh, one of the important thing which i want to tell the audience is because this is something very interesting that your mathematics background and your scientific temper actually became your hallmark in running your firm people who have worked with you in early 90s some of them even my batchmates they say that you had such a unique grip over uh, technology and you used to know how to do technology with law which today is like everybody's child's play Uh, how did you had so much of interest one was the mathematics background then parashan sir got into you know, the legal thing how did you marry them both hey, 
there is a big difference between arithmetic and mathematics mathematics is nothing but logic 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 i see a lot of connection between mathematics law music and chess all of them have to necessarily follow the logic and the principles of logic as called mathematical logic when you apply the law is brilliant apart from this uh, in my college days i did all my physics and chemistry which are also my passionate subjects i developed and uh, when i was a revenue service officer i had visit number of factories i didn't go like a picnic i went and asked relevant questions etc i developed the taste for understanding technology and then what i did was when i was doing this the classification issues everything on taxation it all involved technology so today if you look at our firm it is the intersection of law and technology intersection of law and economics and that is why we are doing ip matters anti dumping matters corporate so all those issues are basically intersection of two different disciplines that is very interesting wonderful sir uh, one of the things which uh, present generation and even in my period it was like a specialization people start thinking in terms of uh, being a litigation lawyer or they call a word called corporate lawyer which i don't even know what is the meaning of corporate law because there is a amalgamation of so many laws which is uh, basically that non litigation work but you feel that this rush for a specialization very early is the answer or one needs to know each aspect of law and then realize that which way you have to go well i don't think uh, i can give a straight answer but i can think from my experience <clears throat> law is a huge wash multifarious thing. as a person as a starter i couldn't have studied or excelled in every branch of law i specialize i said i will specialize in three or four branches of law and super specialized in that and let me answer any question i mean this particular law for anybody as they say is one of the very famous uh, the tag line of a paint company which i saw, saw in my any child book when you see color think of us wow. yeah. so when somebody has a problem in a particular area they must think of me whether they engage me or not different matter at least they think of me so i thought i yes. can specialize and super specialize in it i don't say this is the only way of doing it there are many ways of doing it i did it this way so correct and you'll be very proud sir as a lawyer who primarily did environment and climate change for almost 10 15 years initially even now when as a small law firm we are ranked 37th as per ina sen gupta ranking and others and we do media broadcasting all other stuff but when people say that we know you as environmental lawyer i know what is the journey i have to do but sir you will be when we meet clients and they talk about tax they talk about you the way they talk about xerox kara ke liye they talk about you so far the tax is concerned this is what you just entered just now i think the same thing which pravin anand has done very well in ipr uh, yes. and there are very few who have managed to do that kind of uh, uh, generic uh, their name comes as a generic term now sir one of the things uh, a lot of people want to ask you you remained a vegetarian i believe yes. and your idlis were going to russia in those days because it, they were not available uh, how did you manage to travel with your idlis to such far places because you had to stay longer there i mean as you are asking a very personal question but i think you are right <laughs> yeah uh, there are different varieties of idlis not the there is one called the kanchipuri idli where it has got other pepper and all those things so it, it has a long shelf life and in russia the temperature is so low therefore they don't get spoiled and uh, i may use it once in two days or something remaining i remain on fruits and then vegetables that's fine yeah. i i mean i can starve for two three days i mean nothing happens to me but you remain a vegetarian of course you remain and did you find in your travel in post 2004 5 when it became easy when we all started going vegetarianism became a more common thing it was easier to find such food exactly i mean when you go down south in spain in mediterranean area or portugal in those countries it is very difficult they don't understand what is vegetarian but uh, we managed i mean uh, 
ultimately it is uh, your mindset and then what you stand for and then uh, yeah so long as we can sacrifice some breakfast or lunch or dinner etc then you don't have to worry now right so what is the typical routine for you we know that you get up very early and you do the gayatri mantra at 4 o'clock but what is your exercise regime i think that is something which because people uh, of my generation and much younger to me or badri's generation they have this that we are too busy all the time so they don't know the work life balance what is your definition of work life balance oh this is a very uh, high sounding words but i can tell you what i do i get up around 3:30 4 o'clock before 4:45 4:30 etc i just see some mails and all those things etc then i send it instructions to the my secretary or to the juniors around 5 o'clock or so i am in the park i am a runner and uh, i run alternate day or once or twice a week uh, in the park maybe 10 km 15 km sometimes the weather is nice and we feel nice around 20 km etc and then i come back other days i do my weights i do my stretching yoga most of the days i would say all the days at least 6 or 7 days a week or at least in a month at least 3 4 days only i take rest the exercise otherwise uh, i do about hour and a half at least every day devoted for the physical fitness but during the which time i listen to a lot of lectures so therefore your mind is occupied with the lectures and your body is used for exercises you have not wasted the time and uh, you have gained both so and the most important thing sudhir is seeing the daybreak in the nature when the green are uh, just flashing and when the dawn is there etc is a unique experience what is missing that i think they are missing something phenomenal they put sir brilliantly put i get up at 6 i am going to advance it further uh, so how long you are doing this this is this was part of you when you were a civil servant or even before that or you started uh, somewhere in between i was a walker i was walking regularly i was doing my yoga exercises uh, but when i was around 15 and 60 i mean around 60 years and i was walking in the park one of my junior she is a runner she saw me and they say why don't you run i told her see i can't run because uh, my heart rate goes up she says it's a problem for everybody the beginner if you train you can do and then she ran away so that night i studied in the google what exactly is scientifically i studied next day morning i called my run, uh, trainer i started running that was in april 1st 2013 if i remember correct 2012 and uh, first is three months i ran 10 kilometers and another seven months i ran the half of half marathon oh this is so amazing sir and what do you listen to which you talked about the multitasking at that yeah it could be a variety it could be classical music sometimes sometimes good chantings sometimes good lectures on various philosophical things or it could be a good uh, lecture of uh, famous uh, speakers and then i put it on from the youtube or something that i been recorded earlier and my second does all those things that i tell these are the things i want to listen and then she records and then gives it to me and then uh, i listen to those things sir amazing we are going in a very good direction sir because a lot of things people know about tax will come to that part but on the personal side uh, i also want to know that you did some course on fast reading very early uh, the how to read fast and how to process it fast what is it all about and uh, what did it do to you uh, oh we did miracles see it's called rapid reading okay uh, it is a way in which you can uh, read two lines or three lines simultaneously your eyes are trained to that and uh, assimilate and wherever you need to focus you stop and then do. otherwise you can do faster mm. so i could read about 500 600 pages a day using these techniques yeah so that is the reason the marathon the alternate day marathon and that to a younger colleague telling you and guiding you so you believe in reverse mentoring also that is something so nice to hear 
sir another uh, small poem of dushyant kumar is very famous in uttar pradesh and i'll be very happy if you say something about uh, your tamil nadu if you feel that we should know about some quote he says kaise aakash mein surak kaise aakash mein surakh nahi ho sakta kaise aakash mein surakh nahi ho sakta ek patthar to tabiyat se uchha le so stone properly there will be a dent in the sky even. so that is what you did with your marathon now coming back to the professional world settling in delhi harsh place you had option you could have gone back to chennai or mumbai where you opened the office eventually in 1999 it must be a very courageous decision to open up in delhi what were the initial challenges which you faced of scaling up oh uh when i left in 85 31 october uh, we took uh, a rented house and one single apartment uh, single room is where uh, i started the firm or started the practice along with my brother shridharan uh, we didn't have two table only one table is it enough we'll see first two months or so one or two people they stopped i didn't know anybody in the field i am not a member of any club golf club or gym kana club etc etc i am not a member so i did not know anybody but i had a faith in my god and my expectations were very high what was salary i was getting if i can get that amount as a fees i think i am enough more than i didn't want more than that or i didn't aspire for i wouldn't say i wouldn't want and uh, slowly the work started coming initially it some trickles slowly it became a stream then it became a river it became a ocean and became a tsunami and to handle the tsunami single person cannot do you need to have more number of persons therefore as and when the practice developed we went on adding more people and we had excellent people who joined us phenomenal people and uh, they share the same ideals same philosophy same passion we worked and and the best part is that like you said that the shortest distance is the straight line and i coming from a simple middle class family with no mentoring my father was a civil servant i always when we see you and for over the years we are seeing the growth of the firm the size of the firm the kind of people they hire and the kind of scaling up capability those individual partners have it's a talk of the town but there were a lot of reverses and uh, there were a lot of challenges there were a lot of motivated interest also in between and some of the people are no longer in this world also i i don't want to say anything but the fact is in those times your grit and your determination like not only you created a bigger environmentally sustainable office which i walk through i am in defense colony when i walk through i love the solar panels and everything that was a response from you to the world what do you say about those tough times so then one thing i have learned is that i am never tired of training people yeah. i am never tired of mentoring people and great people joined us great people are working with us over a period of time retirement etc may take place and people might leave also mm. as we rightly said that in this profession with respect there is no point in brooding over but the only thing is whether we can immediately replace with younger generation in fact sometimes the vacuum created at the top yeah it's actually useful for the younger generation to blossom and fill the gap and they do better so long as we can mentor them give them the hope give them the encouragement they do better so therefore one should not shed tear tears somebody has left if they are with you be happy if they are not bless them you don't have to feel bad about it but always have the hope that younger generation will fill the gap and they'll do better the faith is unshakable faith you must have 
Wonderful. Sir, um, the firm has a destiny and the firm is now counted amongst the top few firms in the country. But I will ask you about the pandemic now. Pandemic and the post-pandemic. What do you see the economic scenario of the country? Where do you see India in the fastest growing economy? We are sixth or something. How optimistic you are about Indian economy and our legal business? I am highly optimistic, sir. I am eternal optimist. If you look at the India generations, generations, centuries and centuries, they have always learned to overcome difficulties. We had foreign invasions. We had various types of uh, problems, exploitations, etc. But we came back and we'll come back. This endemic or the pandemic here is actually a wake up call to us. Wherever we were lagging behind on healthcare systems, we are now putting in place. And by, nat by nature, Indian population has got a very high immunity as a, as, when, by, as a God's gift, because our environment is not that uh, clean as uh, others would have. So therefore, you will find that uh, the immunity systems are much better. Of course, old age and other age-related problems will be there. But I see the economy is bouncing back. I am talking to the very CEOs, investors, managing partners, managing directors. They are optimistic. And uh, I'm sure in next two years or so, I think we'll come back to the original position, but probably will excel. This is my thing. And then similarly, in our own office also, during this pandemic period, we closed down the office, but we had a wonderful IT infrastructure. And then we had all the people working from home, had the regular hearing before they come at the courts, to the virtual hearings, client meetings, webinars, nothing stopped. Correct. Of course, we were missing each other. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, things were working out. And I must tell you, Sudhir, lawyer's profession is one of the luckiest professions. We could still stay at home and then still earn. But not many people are endowed like this. Healthcare people, travel people, they have to go out to earn. Absolutely. So that way we are lucky. One more thing also, this is the only profession probably where a client comes to you and teaches you technology, law, economic, law, uh, economics, accounts and all these things at your time, at your convenience, late night, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, with the experts on this particular thing. You learn and you get paid for it. Yeah. Which other service can get you? Which other profession can get you knowledge at your time? If I have to get the particular knowledge in the university, I must go apply for, pay fees. But here, that is one way I think I tell all my juniors, you're lucky. So well said, sir. So one of the uh, things which I want you to share is something very practical that I, how do we upgrade the, there are few things which can be learned from the younger generation, like the marathon thing is a uh, crying call for me now. And um, what are the few things which the younger generation is lacking, especially people who are coming out of law school last five, seven years? What do they just need to add up to be more uh, uh, evolved and more successful? What are those skill sets you want them to develop? Yes, sir. They are excellent in their language, excellent in searches, excellent in gathering information. But the next step, it acquires knowledge. Information is not equal to knowledge, sir. You can pick out a particular proposition and take out 10 case laws. How they are relevant, how to use it in a court of law is the extra thing which they like to learn. I suppose they will do it. Very well. And sir, which are the new practice areas Lakshya Kumaran is focusing now? Which are the future practice areas like technology you talked about, dump dumping was a big area. Tax, of course, you are the, everybody knows tax, then it's your opinion and then the matter is sealed. But which are the new two, three practice areas you think is something we should be excited and we'll see them growing in the next two, three, five years? I would say data protection is a very great uh, thing of the future because that is going to be the gold of the future. We need to focus on that. Competition law, antitrust law, as the economy grows, you will find there are people who can misuse 
abuse their dominance, etc. That will be a practice which we we'll have to definitely look at it. Apart from these two, what I find is going to be the great disputes involving technology, the arbitration involving technology failed, technology succeeded, etc. So, in future, we will look at the antitrust law, data protection law, and international trade law. That is the one which ultimately sealed the entire thing. Wonderful. The last word I want you to say one saying of any famous Tamil saint whom you read or in your mornings. One saying for us because we should know that. One mantra which you want to share with us. Yadanin yadanin ningiyan, nodal adanin adanin ilan. Whichever object on which you shed or you sacrifice the love or the, the feeling of having it, if you leave that, you will not get into a problem arising out of that particular object. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for this wonderful time to us. And this will be seen by many. And I'm so grateful you could spare your time and guide us. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you, Bye-bye, sir. Take God care. bless you.